It's time for At Home with the Rubber Ducks, powered by First Energy. 640 WHLO gets you closer to your hometown team with stories of the game and updates from the season ahead. Line to left center, that's a base hit and a game winner for the Akron Rubber Ducks. Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, affordable family fun. I drive to right, that's well hit, back, back, that ball is gone, it's a home run. Here's your hosts, Marco Lenave and Jim Clark. Welcome into this week's edition of At Home with the Rubber Ducks. Marco Lanave joined by Jim Clark. Over the previous weeks, we've talked with figures within the player development operation for the Cleveland Indians. And now we're going to hear from some of the players being developed, actually, at the Lake County site this summer while the Cleveland Indians play during the shortened 2020 season. From interviews that were done with these players earlier in the spring and summer, May and June. And uh, Jim, it was fun to catch up with these guys and, and they have some interesting stories. You find that out there on there, you know, they're down there for a reason. They're trying to stay ready. You know, they're, they were so disappointed not having a regular minor league or major league season in front of them. Any of those guys could get a call at any point to come join the big club. So they're down there for a reason. They were great to chat with. The fans loved it. And they're staying ready right now in a very good atmosphere. All guys who have been Rubber Ducks previously, you'll hear from four of them. Tristan McKenzie, Ernie Clement, Sam Henches, and Nolan Jones, all coming up during At Home with the Rubber Ducks. And we'll go back to these player Q&As, starting with Tristan McKenzie. This is from Mitch. What's it like being the young guy? When you're in spring training, wherever dealing with all the guys who've been to the big leagues, and you're the young guy in this situation, what's that like? This spring training was, I'd say, it, it was really eye-opening for me, being that it was my first big league spring training. So it was, a, it was very different for me being around a lot of those guys. Like I had interacted with a lot of guys just in passing, being around guys like Savali or Plesac or Bieber, where I'd played with them. Uh, it's it's a lot easier for me to relate to those guys, but. This year, it was kind of full-blown in terms of I was around Francisco Lindor. I was around Jose Ramirez. I was around Carlos Santana. I was around Roberto Perez. Like, guys that when you go home and you you like, oh, I want to watch Indians baseball, like, you turn on your TV, those are the faces that you see. So, for me, it was very different being around them in, like, a, a personal space. But I'd say as an organization as a whole, especially those guys who are, like, the leaders of the clubhouse, mainly following Tito's lead, they're very welcoming, especially to their young guys in terms of they know that a lot of their success that they're having is, at least for right now, is coming from the guys that are there. But the success that they want to have in the future and the brand that they want to build in, within our organization comes from a lot of the young guys. So they're very welcoming and they're very uh, forthgiving in terms of like their experience and their knowledge towards the younger guys. Best baseball memory, either high school or travel ball. Two examples. So one would be when I when I played in Cooperstown at the age of 12. Just a lifelong memory for me. It's something I'll never forget. I really enjoyed just kind of going up there and spending time with my team. That was the first time I'd been away from home and been isolated from everything but baseball. So that was a very eye-opening thing for me. And I think that's kind of where I not developed the love for the game because that started at a very young age. But I think that's where it started to mature and kind of develop for me a little bit more. And then two would be when I was in high school and I made it to the state tournament. That was a big thing for me. And then following that would obviously be getting drafted. All right, we got one from Jason H. Tristan, was there a moment that you knew you had a shot of becoming a professional? I would say it was very turbulent for me in terms of like my developmental growth in, in the baseball field. Going into my junior year, I was still very much like open to talking to colleges. I'd only talked to small D1s at that time. And then during my junior year, like I began to talk to larger D1s. So I talked to a small D1 that Jacob DeGrom went to is called Stetson in Deland, Florida. So I talked to them like the end of my freshman year going into my sophomore year. But my dream school at the time was I wanted to go to University of Miami. It's like close to home. That's where a lot of the big boppers came through. Like Manny Machado, that's like a big name for me. They coming up, growing, watching baseball. There's guys from, like, your area. So I wanted to go to Miami. So going into my junior year, coming out of my junior year, it was like I started to catch more interest from schools, not even thinking about the professional side of it. Just kind of, I want to go to Miami. I want to go to Miami. And then I – but I got offers from extremely, extremely very good schools. So I talked to several different schools, and I ended up settling on Vanderbilt, which I think is a great institution. 
And then at that point, my mind didn't go any further than that until probably later coming up into my senior year when I started to attract attention from pro scouts. And when they kind of came to me or like, hey, we think you have a chance was kind of like when my eyes were open, I was like, wow, I might have a chance at this. We have one from Dave Berg. So who's the toughest batter you have faced? When it comes to like a hitter that I would preferably not face, Austin Hayes. The very first game I pitched against him, I actually was like the first game in Lynchburg in 2017. I struck out over 10. I wanted to say it was like third, 14, 13, something like that. So it was a really, really good game for me. And the beginning of the game was he was a leadoff hitter, ended up getting like to a full count. And it's like the very beginning of the game. So in my mind, I'm like trying to find my footing, trying to like get into a groove for the game, kind of like determine how the rest of the game is going to go. And he came up and it was like three, two. And I kind of grooved the fastball inside home run. So from like, from that point on, it was like full gas pedal, full like go. And I ended up striking out 14. And there was a point in the game where I think he had three at bats against me. He got on base every single time, first of all. And then second of all, I think I walked him in his either his second or his third at bat. And I just overheard him. Like, I'm on the mound. He gets to first base. And I hear him talking to his first base coach, like, while he's taking off his glove. And he goes, yeah, I don't know why these guys can't hit him. And I'm fuming <laughs> on the mound. Fuming. Just, like, I, just, I couldn't get around the fact that, like, I felt like I was out there trying to dominate guys, and I felt like I was doing a good job of that. And I just, no matter what I did, no matter what I tried, no matter what the catcher put down, it was like getting put in play, getting fouled off, and it was being hit hard. This is from Justin B. Who would you say has been the biggest influence on your career to this point? My father. Just in terms of being around me and showing me the game of baseball in the first place, and then on top of that, him learning about the game himself and then imparting that onto me. And I feel like even to this day, he's a person that almost as much as I know myself, he might know me even a little bit better. So when I go out and I have a good start, he's able to kind of pick apart like what I did well, what I didn't do well. And we can have grown up decisions and grown up conversations about like, let's say I go out and I have a terrible start and I, I don't really want to talk about it. Like we're able to have those discussions as to what I might've done or what I could have done better it's a little easier to relate to and kind of give that information back and forth. Whereas let's say it's a coach that you, you just met, you met him in March and you're trying to have a discussion like that in April when you're, you're a little bit touchy about the subject. In the minor leagues, of course, you're even sitting in the stands at times charting. What yeah. can you learn out of, out of doing those? What, what's sort of the biggest thing you've taken from those? I like being in the stands before I pitch because you're able to kind of pay attention to the game from a different perspective. It actually happened a lot in 17 when Bieber, Savali, and I were – all three of us were in uh, Lynchburg at the same time where we'd kind of throw back-to-back -back days and we'd converse about it. Let's say Savali went out and he threw. He'd be like, yeah, this, I threw this guy this, and I threw him a sinker and he hit it pretty well, but I think if you throw him this, you might be able to get him out. And then let's say you're sitting behind the plate and you see those same things. You, you kind of formulate your own opinions and your own ideas – and then you get extra information from your teammates or let's say whatever the game, the gameplay actually is, you're able to kind of go forward from there. Now you have a breakout year in 17, um, you know, your uh, futures game, all-star, mid-season all-star, post-season all-star. Then you come to double A. You're held off until June, but you pick right where you left off. Well, there's much of an adjustment from A ball to double A ball. Coming into the season, in 18 where I did, so coming into double-A in the middle of June when my teammates had already kind of faced some of those lineups before, faced some of those guys before, it was a lot easier for me in terms of, like, that information that I said that I'm able to go and ask a guy, like, what did he see? How did he look? A lot of that information was a little more pinned down in the middle of the season as opposed to early in the season. So I was able to make that adjustment quickly just based on not the information or, like, the work that I put in, but just the guys around me. And you've had some highs and lows. What have you learned from the injuries? What has it done with you inside? I'd say I've always grown up with a love of the game of baseball, but the appreciation for how easily accessible it was for me when I was healthy, as opposed to when I, they were telling me, like, no, you cannot play. Don't pick up a baseball. Don't do this. Don't do that that was very different for me because growing up my whole life, I'd never been hurt. So I'd say the injuries kind of taught me to appreciate what I have while it's, while it's with me or when I do get to pitch in a game, enjoying what that feels like, because 
you never know when it can be taken away, even from a weird circumstance like the coronavirus. Do you have a particular moment from that time in Akron that you did have in, in 18? Was there a particular highlight uh, from that time? It was like a special night. We wore special jerseys. There's a cancer hospital that's close to the field. And one of the little girls that has cancer, she designed our jersey. And I had her sign my jersey before the game. And I had like one of my better starts of the year. And it was like the most fulfilling thing for me. In the middle of the game, I want to say in like the fifth inning, they stopped the whole game in between, in between the innings. And her and I think, I don't know if it was her mother or somebody else, got to kind of run around the bases and slap hands with, with all our team members and all the opposing team members. And I know what it did for me, so I can't imagine how she felt being in that situation with all eyes on her and being in that situation where everybody's rooting for her. So that was a really big moment for me in 18. That was Indians prospect Tristan McKenzie with highlights of his Q&A session with Rubber Ducks fans this May. You can hear the full interview on the Akron Rubber Ducks podcast. This portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks was brought to you in part by Ambridge Hospitality, Fairfield Inn and Suites, and the Courtyard by Marriott Akron Fairlawn, all partners presenting Rubber Ducks baseball. Coming up next, we'll hear highlights of the Q&A with Ernie Clement. That's right after this break. You're listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO, your new home for Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. Here at Sarah Auto Park, community service has always been a priority of ours. These days, that spirit is more important than ever. Join us as we do everything we can to take care of our doctors, nurses, all other essential businesses, and their employees. If our community needs us for anything, even to safely get a bag of groceries to our most vulnerable, we're here. We'll get through this together. Sarah Auto Park. This is Rubber Ducks broadcaster Marco Lanave. When people ask me who's the number one pick for print and copy solutions in the Akron area, I tell them Meritech. The pride of the Rubber Ducks for the past nine years, Meritech's roster also includes IT consulting, cloud voice and data services for a powerhouse lineup to reduce risk, control costs, and increase productivity. So call Team Meritech today and tell them the Rubber Ducks sent you. Meritech Technology, to empower your business. Exceptional care means having access to world-class physicians and services. That's the care Cleveland Clinic Akron General provides to Akron and the surrounding communities. Whether it's primary care or specialized services, we put your needs first with care that is comprehensive and best of all, close to home. Cleveland Clinic Akron General is committed to the community and your health. To learn more about our services close to you, visit akrongeneral.org. Are you looking for a great apartment with the best location? Fur Hill Towers Apartments is just a five-minute walk to the University of Akron or a five-minute drive downtown. You'll find spacious living, convenience, and fun with a wide variety of restaurants and entertainment just outside your door. Perfectly suited for young professionals and students on the go looking for off-campus living. Stop by 55 First Street Hill, Akron, or call 330-762-7000. That's 330-762-7000 today and reserve your apartment home. Um. Everyone at Honda wants you to be safe. And right now, you need a car you can count on and your dealer to go the extra mile. So if your Honda needs parts or service, we're right here ready to help. Working to follow all government guidelines in order to get you what you need and help you stay safe with a reliable car that's ready to go when you need it. Visit northernohiohondadealers.com. Your business has a story to tell. Let Fast Signs Medina help you using the right mix of visual communication solutions like signs, banners, digital displays, fleet graphics, mobile marketing, health and safety communications, and so much more. Give Fast Signs Medina your business challenge and we'll come up with a plan to grow your business, reach more customers, and accomplish more than you ever thought possible. Fast Signs Medina, more than fast, more than signs, more than ready to help you grow your business. Call today and say Go Ducks for your discount. This is At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO. Deep drive out to right field. Rafaela turning, watching. It's gone to the Bud Light line, Tiki Terrace. Your new home for Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. 
Welcome back. This is Marco Lanave, and this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Precious Cargo Trailways and Melt Bar and Grilled, both part of the lineup presenting Rubber Ducks Baseball. Now we have highlights of this May's Q&A session with recent Rubber Duck and Indians prospect Ernie Clement. You, know, you came to Akron at late in 18. I mean, really quite a jump. Lake County, Lynchburg, you finish at Akron. How'd you like playing for the Rubber Ducks the last year and maybe 15, 20, 30 games? Yeah, I, I loved it. So I just came off an injury. I, I got hurt for a couple weeks in Lynchburg. I came back and I really wasn't expecting the call up and it was a nice, uh, pleasant surprise. And they kind of just threw me right into the fire. I let off my first game, played shortstop. They had a great team that year. We, we made a really good playoff run. So it was just nice to, to getting into that winning culture and, um, you know, try and help them win some ball games. From George M., what do you like most about Akron? I love my time there. The, the ballpark in Akron is unbelievable. They get a ton of fans. I love playing in front of those fans. And every year we've had some good success. So, um, yeah, I, I just I loved Akron as a whole. What's the greatest piece of advice, defensive-wise, that you can give to a high school shortstop? You know, I would say just try and get outs. It, does, it doesn't have to look all that pretty, but if you're making outs and you're making plays and helping your team win and just knowing the game, it's, it helps so much, and they can teach you fundamentals. They can teach you, like, how to be more efficient with your footwork, with your glove, but just – do whatever you can to make a play and help your team win it because because winning at the end of the day is all that really matters so for me growing up and you know into college it was never it was never all fundamentals and mechanics it was all you know do whatever you can to make the play doesn't matter how it looks and now that I've moved into pro ball now they're teaching me efficiency and and how to you know just be more efficient all around as a baseball player so I would say get as many reps as possible and, um, you know, learn pace of the game and, and how to make the play. What were some of the things that you did to learn to quick transfer? For me, like, in order to make the play, you have to get rid of the ball fast. You can't hold on to the ball. I never had a, a particularly strong arm growing up. So for me, I had to get rid of the ball fast. So it started in my catch play. When I play catch, I just I try and quick release as fast as I could with my partner. And in doing that, I learned to fail with my hands. I, I learned how, what, how fast I needed to be in order to make the play. So, you know, push your limits with your quick release and, and work on it every day. How do you explain your, your Lake County, your 267 and what, 54 games? In the Lynchburg, you go from low A ball to high A ball. 346 in Lynchburg. That's quite a jump. Batting average going from a low level to a high level. Did you see the ball better? What clicked from one to the next? Yeah, so in, in low A, it was a lot of, you know, I'm trying new things. And that was my first full season in pro ball. So I'm like, I got a lot of things going, going through my mind. I'm trying to, you know, stay healthy and all that. But in Lynchburg, I just, I got back to basics and just got back to what worked for me. And um, I started seeing the ball really well. And and it's crazy because in baseball, you can get hot for a month and it can change your season. So, you know, I, I took advantage of my time in Lynchburg and, and learned as much as I could from those guys. Um, and then they gave me the opportunity to go up to Akron. And from there, I, I learned, I really learned to fail because I, I, I started off pretty slow. And at the, at the end of the season, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to help those guys win because we wanted to win a championship. Honestly, it was a, as good of my first season as it could have gone because of how, I, how much I learned throughout the whole thing. And the, the numbers really, really didn't matter to me. I, I learned just so much from playing in three levels, you got to play with three different teams and a whole new group of guys each level. So, you know, I, I got to really see what professional baseball is all about, and, and it, was, it was an awesome season. And then comes last year, a very steady and good year at Akron again, a taste of Columbus and a championship. Not bad. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's why you play the game. So as a team, we, kind of, we struggled a little bit in Akron. So when I got to Columbus, I, I – the, the mood kind of changed, the culture kind of changed, and we were just trying to win ball games and, and bring a championship home. So, uh, you know, that's, the, that's what I play for. I, I love to win, and, um, you know, it was, it was awesome to help those guys win a championship. From Joey, Nico, and Chris, do you <clears throat> play travel baseball? Growing up in Rochester, New York, there's not a whole lot of options for travel baseball. So I did the Babe Ruth League. Uh, I did Legion baseball. And then towards the end of my high school baseball career, I did 
two tournaments in Virginia and a tournament in Florida. And that was really all the col- the travel baseball I did. Like I got lucky and I, I played in front of the Virginia university of Virginia coaches and they offered me a scholarship because one of the recruits had backed out. And so I, I was kind of a right place, right time for the university of Virginia when I went, but um, I really didn't do a whole lot of travel baseball. I, I stayed pretty local. What other sports did you play and how did they help you in baseball? I played hockey, which helped, helped my legs. It helped my muscle recovery. Um, it helped my speed. I think I can say I got a lot faster because of hockey. I don't think I got faster because of baseball. I played soccer, which helped me condition wise. I got in great shape from soccer. I mean, you're running miles and miles during a soccer game. So I think that in itself really, really prepared me for the longevity of a season. And then I, just other, other sports that had to do with hand-eye coordination. I mean, golf is – I think it's harder to hit a golf ball straight than it is to hit a baseball straight. So um, all these different things kind of were their own little work for baseball. So, you know, I, the, more, the more sports you can do, the more things you can do, the, the better it's going to be. Has there been anyone, athlete or, or baseball player, or anyone that you uh, remember being sort of awestruck by? It's, it's pretty funny. I think Terry Francona, the first time I, I met him, um, I think that's probably the most like starstruck I ever was, considering I was a Yankees fan growing up, and I watched him manage against the Yankees a ton. And it was just like, this, I watched this guy on TV managing against Derek Jeter and those Yankees. I mean, they had such good games back when I was growing up. And I just, it was just like kind of crazy to me that I was now in that locker room in spring training and he was my manager in spring training. It was just so cool to me. From uh, team Fontana, what has been uh, your, your biggest career highlighter or most impressive baseball moment? In pro ball, it was last year winning that governor's cup championship. That was just incredible. It was such a cool ride and I was lucky to uh, be a part of that. Um, And then just as a whole, I think it would be the national championship we won at Virginia in 2015. You know, it's just so cool to look back on and um, all the adversity we faced throughout the season. It was just, I mean, such a wild ride. And, and, you know, we didn't, we weren't really supposed to be in the playoffs even, but it just goes to show you all you need is a chip and a chair and um, anything can happen. So, uh, you know, I think that right there, just from all the adversity we faced throughout the season to come back and come together and and win a championship there, I think that would probably be my biggest uh, achievement so far. Brian Warner talks about your clutch walk-off in the Super Regionals at Virginia, and he wants to know, how do you explain how you're able to perform in such an intense situation? So that goes back to our preparation. I mean, all year long at Virginia, our coaches put a lot of pressure on us in practice. And then by the time we made it to Omaha and we're playing in front of 25,000 people, it's nothing. I mean, it's just like practice. It's just like playing in the backyard every day. I mean, you don't even really realize – the pressure in the situation. So I got up and I'm like, and I trusted my plan. I trusted my preparation. And that gave me a lot of confidence to go up there and get the job done. That was Indians prospect Ernie Clement with highlights of his Q and a session with rubber ducks fans this may, you can hear the full interview on the Akron rubber ducks podcast. This segment of at home with the rubber ducks was brought to you in part by your pizza shop and high voltage carting, both on the team of partners presenting rubber ducks baseball. Coming up next, we'll have highlights of the fan Q&A with Indians prospect and 2019 Rubber Ducks pitcher Sam Hentges. That comes your way after the break. You're listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO, your new home for Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. This is At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO. Luda going back. It's over his head. It's over the wall. The first double-A home run for Oscar Gonzalez. Your new home for Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. Welcome back. This is Marco Lanave, and this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Suma Health and Hudson's Restaurant, both in the lineup presenting Rubber Ducks baseball. We now share highlights from a Q&A session this past May with Rubber Ducks 2019 pitcher Sam Hentges. What's your favorite moment in your time in the Indians organization? I think there's a couple. I think one, obviously, that stands out is being drafted by the Indians. Um, It was a very cool experience. Uh, We got to go to Cleveland. They brought my family and I out to Cleveland. We kind of toured the city. 
Uh, went to a few Indians games. And then that first year we won the, I know it was rookie ball, but we won the the championship of the rookie ball league. Uh, that was a fun experience. And probably my first big league spring training. That was definitely very, very cool to see all the big leaguers and how they go about their business and, and on an everyday basis. Uh, so I'd probably say those three things are pretty cool moments for me with the Indians so far. Now, who was your biggest autograph that you went after as a kid that you got? Probably Joe Maurer. One of my uh, family friends actually was a, he was in a marketing agency and they had a deal with the twins and they were doing a commercial. Joe Maurer was supposed to be playing catch with a couple of kids in an outfield. And, and I was one of the kids that he was playing catch with in this commercial. It's probably out there somewhere. I haven't seen it in a while, um, but I got his autograph that day and, that was super cool for me. From Tim F., your biggest takeaway from the 2019 season? My biggest takeaway when we're talking about pitching and uh, just kind of the day-to-day grind is probably how to deal with failure. Um, I didn't have the greatest 2019 season. There was a lot of failure in there, but I think I've learned to handle it better over the course of the season. And I mean, that's just something that comes with anything really. And everyone's got to learn how to adapt when you do fail. And I think that's something that I learned a lot last year. Sam, this is from a curious non-Minnesotan. So it's not uh, you or me. Um, Did you ever play hockey? I did play hockey. I actually played hockey for maybe 14 years. I started playing hockey young five years old, maybe six. And I grew up playing it. I don't know why I was put into it. I actually think I was put into it because my dad always wanted to play hockey, but couldn't. And he he played basketball growing up. Um, So he just put me into hockey early. I liked it. I think it definitely helped out with baseball and pitching because there's a lot of strength that you gain playing hockey in your legs over the years because of how difficult skating is and how much you skate and all the hours spent on the ice. So I'm, I'm thankful I played hockey and loved every second of it. Uh, the Minnesota state fair that was actually canceled. Do you have any special personal memories from what they call the great Minnesota get together? A lot. I mean, I, I probably went to it every year. Actually one memory that sticks out. I worked at it and I worked at this, booth that they had there. It was called the Ballpark Cafe. And this was when I was in high school and I was working 12-hour shifts and it was miserable. It was hot, humid. And I was working. And for about 10 days straight, I was making their classic dish. They had garlic fries. So they just put garlic and, and mix it with French fries and they would serve it. And I'm not kidding you, for the next month, my hand smelled like garlic and it was just terrible. It was so bad. I was taking vinegar with a spoon, trying to scrub it off my hands. Yeah, it was miserable. But I was in high school. I was making money, so I was happy. From Team Fontana, what pitch was the hardest for you to learn to throw? Probably my changeup, because I still haven't figured it out. (laughs) Because there's so many different kind of changeups that you can throw and different finger placement and a circle change and a split change. Right now, I kind of throw a modified split changeup. But early on, I was throwing a circle change because I think that's the easiest way to learn it. But that it just wasn't really working for me, so I had to switch it up. So I'd definitely say changeup. What game as a pro for you sticks out in your mind the most? Probably, the, I mean, the games that the results were good for me. Um, one game that sticks out probably for a negative reason was the, was the day that I hurt my elbow and, and needed Tommy John surgery. I think I probably think about that game the most out of all of them. I guess it's a motivator to kind of keep me going, and, and it, sh- it showed me how quickly the game can be taken away from, from you in, in an instant. So it keeps me humble and not taking anything for granted. Tell us your story but not pitching really until you were a senior. I mean, I pitched in Little League. Everyone pitches in Little League. Um, but I started not to to pitch as much when I got to high school, and I was more of a first baseman. And I was actually 
on the varsity team as a sophomore and my position was designated hitter. <laughs> I was not a pitcher or a first baseman. I just hit, but I think I didn't pitch a lot my junior season because we had, we just had a lot of good pitchers and they were older and they were more experienced and they were just better than me at the, I mean, I, they were good. They were very good pitchers. Um, it wasn't until my senior season uh, that I became a full-time pitcher. I would still play first base, but, I mean, I would pitch every week in our games. So, yeah, I guess my senior season is kind of when I kind of left the dream of being a first baseman behind and, and started focusing on pitching. How did the Indians find you? I think it was just at one of my first high school games that saw me pitch, um, and then they would come regularly after – after that, every time I would pitch and kind of got in contact with me, and we still talked to the scout that signed me and, and have him over to our place in Shoreview every once in a while. So it's nice to, to stay in contact with him. Who's had the most influence, would you say, on your career? I would say on my baseball career as a whole growing up would be my dad. He taught me the game and kind of showed me the ropes and was – was hard on me when he needed to be and, and was nice when he, when he wanted to be. Um, but he was, he was a good coach. He coached me all the way through Little League, kind of drove home that passion that he had for the game, and it kind of rubbed off on me, and, and now I have it. That was Indians prospect Sam Hentges. You can hear the full interview on the Akron Rubber Ducks podcast. And this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks was brought to you in part by Planet Fitness and Diamond Deli both on the team presenting Rubber Ducks Baseball. Coming up next, we have our final set of Q&A highlights with Indians prospect Nolan Jones. That comes your way right after this. You're listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO, your new home for Akron Rubber Ducks Baseball, powered by First Energy. Are you looking for a great apartment with the best location? Fur Hill Towers Apartments is just a five-minute walk to the University of Akron or a five-minute drive downtown. You'll find spacious living, convenience, and fun with a wide variety of restaurants and entertainment just outside your door. Perfectly suited for young professionals and students on the go looking for off-campus living. Stop by 55 First Street Hill, Akron, or call 330-762-7000. That's 330-762-7000 today and reserve your apartment home. There aren't many things in life that are easy. There's easy listening music, easy chairs, easy money. But did you know that you can enjoy all three while getting rid of your old energy-wasting refrigerator? You can schedule a pickup without moving from your easy chair. We'll haul it away and even pay you for it. So go ahead, take it easy, and let us take it from here. First Energy's Ohio Utilities will pick up your fridge and you'll get $50. Just visit EnergySaveOhio.com to schedule a pickup. Now that's easy. What's better than a good steak? A great steak at a great value in a fun place. Texas Roadhouse. From fall off the bone ribs to made from scratch sides, we've got something for everybody. Great steak at a great value. Texas Roadhouse. Located at 4310 Lake Point Corporate Drive in Stowe. And now offering drive through carry-out, and curbside service. Visit texasroadhouse.alohaorderonline.com or call 330-920-9844. Bridgestone DriveGuard tires deliver a clutch performance that won't leave you stranded on the side of a rural road or a busy highway. They're engineered to take a puncture and to keep running up to 50 miles after a flat at 50 miles an hour. Plus, you'll get the smooth, quiet ride and impressive tread wear life you've come to expect from Bridgestone tires. Let the clutch performance of Bridgestone DriveGuard tires give you peace of mind. Bridgestone, proud sponsor of the Akron Rubber Ducks. Here at Sarah Auto Park, community service has always been a priority of ours. These days, that spirit is more important than ever. Join us as we do everything we can to take care of our doctors, nurses, all other essential businesses, and their employees. If our community needs us for anything, even to safely get a bag of groceries to our most vulnerable, we're here. We'll get through this together. Sarah Auto Park. No savvy traveler likes long lines or waiting around. So, lucky for you, the Akron Canton Airport is easy and fast. With affordable on-site parking, quick check-in, and short security lines, you'll be through the airport in just minutes. CAK gives you more freedom to enjoy the things you love, like vacationing. 
With low fares to 11 nonstop destinations and just one stop to the world, book your next adventure from CAK. Rubber Ducks fans, check out City Barbecue in Fairlawn for the best barbecue in town. I gotta tell you, City Barbecue is the best smoked meats I've ever experienced in my life. Literally the best beef brisket sandwich I've ever had. Definitely the best barbecue I've ever had. My best all-around barbecue experience ever. Best barbecue around. Some of the best barbecue I've personally tasted. I highly recommend this spot for some of the best BBQ you'll ever have. Visit citybarbecue.com or stop by 2870 West Market Street in Fairlawn. Everyone at Honda wants you to be safe. And right now, you need a car you can count on and your dealer to go the extra mile. So if your Honda needs parts or service, we're right here ready to help. Working to follow all government guidelines in order to get you what you need and help you stay safe with a reliable car that's ready to go when you need it. Visit NorthernOhioHondaDealers.com. This is At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO. Deep drive out to right field. Rafaela turning, watching. It's gone to the Bud Light line, Tiki Terrace. Your new home for Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. Welcome back. This is Marco Lanave. And this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Visit Jacksonville and Chick-fil-A, both in the lineup presenting Rubber Ducks baseball. We now share highlights of the fan Q&A with Indians top prospect Nolan Jones, who wore Rubber Ducks uniform in 2019. From Travis P., what's been your most memorable baseball moment on your journey right now to the big leagues? That's a good question. I've had a lot of them. Obviously, getting drafted originally, I had a very cool experience with the draft. I got invited to go to the draft, and because um, family wasn't able to travel, I, have older, I had older grandparents. Um, you weren't able to bring as many people to the draft, and I have a really tight-knit family and friends group, and I wanted them all to be there. So we actually rented out a uh, restaurant for draft night and we had probably 200 friends and family there. So to hear my name called, I mean, that's a moment I'll never forget. But then on top of that, I mean, I think the futures game this year was kind of like one of the best experiences I could have ever dreamed of. I knew about the futures game growing up. I knew a couple people that played in it. Um, so to kind of, it's kind of to get that call and hear that I was in the futures game, it, it was unreal to me. I can't even put it into words. And then, I mean, everything on top of it, just it being in Cleveland, the fans there, like it all just added into it and made it such an incredible experience for me. It was something I'll never forget for sure. Well, Nolan, one of the highlights in your time with us last season was when the Rubber Ducks went and played near your hometown. I played on the other side of the state line over in uh, Trenton, New Jersey. What was that like for you? Yeah, so I haven't, been able to play as close to home as I would have wished but I mean the Trenton Thunder Stadium is 15 minutes away I grew up going to games there I hit in a home run derby there when I was in high school so to kind of see all that come full swing and be playing on that field like when I was playing little league my whole time we had a night for our little league team that we would all go there and it was like just thinking back like I was sitting in those stands I was one of those little kids one day and now I'm playing on this field and then I got to look up and my whole family was there. All my friends were there. I mean, that's, that's what you dream about for sure. Okay. From Miranda Terry, what do you feel is most important skill to learn early when you're playing baseball? Beyond any skill, I think it would be to play the game the right way. I learned at a very young age. My dad taught me a couple lessons that I wish I wouldn't have had to learn in public. I think I was 10 years old. I got a 3-0 pitch. And my dad was the third base coach, gave me the take sign. And I swung at it, and I popped it up to the pitcher. And I, was, I walked back to the dugout, took my helmet off. I was the third out. And so my dad came in, um, grabbed me by the shirt, and said, put your, put your helmet on and go run down and touch first base. And I was like, Dad, I'm out. I'm not doing that. We got to go in the field. And absolutely would not let me leave the dugout if I didn't put my helmet on and go touch first base. Um, and you can imagine as a 10 year old kid, how embarrassed I was of that experience. Um, so I learned a little bit more of the hard way, how to play the game the right way. And I think that definitely takes a toll into, into everything. And if you learn that at a young age, you're definitely going to, going to have success and going to be a good teammate and things like that. I mean, it's all about if you truly enjoy it and love it and play the game the right way. 
How big is playing catch every day as a youngster? Incredibly. I mean, I think there's always ways to get better and ways you can work on your game just in your throwing program. Um, you always want to make those uncomfortable plays. And something for me that was always uncomfortable or is always uncomfortable is the bare hand play. And something that I've added into my game of catch is that I pick up a ball off the ground and I throw it when I'm about 90 feet away as I'm playing catch. And that's something that I've added into my, my routine before every single day of batting practice. And now the hard part is not the throw, but fielding it. So it's like I've worked on and I've, I've added things that are uncomfortable for me into my catch play that helps make the game easier. So I think catch is one of the most important things. And I'm still, I have a 16 year old brother and I'm still trying to teach him that it's one of the most important things you can do every day. Have you always walked a lot with your plate patients? I actually have to give my dad some credit on that. We have a batting cage in our backyard. We would go out there and my dad would come home from work and I'd already be loosened up off the tee and everything. And he would come home and he would try to strike me out. So I really think that the competitiveness between going out there, my older brother actually played baseball um, through high school. And so having him out there as well, we were always trying to get each other out and do things but learning the strike zone, I learned the strike zone at an early age. Um, and I think that I can definitely say that I'm stubborn to it. I've learned what I'm good at as a hitter and what I'm not good at. And I think that definitely all plays into the walks, but also sometimes the high strikeout rates because I know what I do well and I know what I don't do well. So if I'm going up there, I'm not looking to cover everything. I'm looking to cover certain pitches in certain locations and things like that. And if they don't throw it, it's going to lead to strikeouts sometimes. But I definitely think that that's something that helps me a lot. And Nolan, you mentioned sort of the influence of your family. Can you uh, tell us about how, how sports was, uh, was big for you and your, and your family growing up? Sports have been all of our lives, really. We're very blessed to have an extremely athletic family. My brother is now 24. He is a goaltender in the Colorado Avalanche organization. He and I had a very extremely competitive relationship growing up where he was the goaltender and I was a forward in ice hockey. We were able to go in our basement. Our basement until this recent year has been a concrete floor and we were always playing roller hockey down there with him in net and me shooting on him. And then in our backyard, like I said earlier, we had a batting cage. So it, there was always competition for, for him and I. Um, we were always able to push each other. My, uh, my younger sister is an extremely good athlete. She uh, is committed to play softball at Penn State University um, starting next year. And then my younger brother, who is the best athlete in the family, actually, he is a baseball player and a hockey player. Um, he's a sophomore in high school. So, I mean, he doesn't exactly have as much of a competition around the house anymore because my brother and I are both off doing our own sports. But... He's the best athlete in the family by far, so I'm excited to see, uh, see what he's got in store for us. If you were not playing baseball, what would you be doing? Playing hockey. Playing. <laughs> I think, yeah, I know I loved playing hockey growing up. I mean, hockey was my, honestly, my, one of my favorite things in the world. Um, and like I said, I had to stop playing due to concussions. I had some serious um, head injuries that kept me out of school for a, a long amount of time, and I struggled reading. My mom had to read me my books my sophomore year of high school. So I had a lot of, a lot of problems with that. But if I could do anything, I would do anything to play hockey. From Shannon Mayer, who's the one pitcher, past or present, you would love to face? I mean, I'd have to say Nolan Ryan. Um, I was named after him. It wouldn't be a fun at bat at all. But I think I would have to have to say Nolan Ryan and let him know I'm named after him and, and getting that bat off him. Have you ever met someone that you really were sort of starstruck or, or in awe of somebody? Yeah, so I actually had an opportunity to go when I was in high school to the Perfect Game All-American game. And we got to go to the, the game that night, the MLB game. And I think that Padres were playing the Reds. And I actually got to be on the field for batting practice. And I met Araldis Chapman. And I think that was something that was like, holy crap, I can't believe I'm standing in front of this guy. But 
honestly, even the guys that play for the Indians, they're still like superstars to me. I mean, I got the opportunity and I mean, I wouldn't tr trade it for the world. It was one of the coolest opportunities in the world to be in spring training this year with the big league club. Tito told me when I got called, when I got called up to big league camp, he said, ask a million questions. He said, be annoying, ask a million questions, but learn, learn from these guys, learn from everything they do. They're the best in the game for a reason. And I mean, he's right. They're the best in the game because they work the hardest. They work the right way and they do things the right way. I mean, I think the coolest experience for me was the first day I got called up, Francisco Lindor walked straight over to me and shook my hand and introduced himself. That guy is such a leader and people follow him and look up to him because he is such a leader. And that is something that a leader does. Um, so that was something so cool for me. And he doesn't obviously doesn't even realize that how much it meant to me that he came up and said hello to me, but it was such a cool experience to get to, to meet him and, and to learn from them, to meet all those guys and be around those guys every day. And it's still really not real to me that I know them, they know my name, stuff like that. Like they're figures that we look up to as superhuman as younger baseball players. And I, I got the opportunity to play against Mike Trout and talk to him a little bit on third base this year. Um, in spring training. So, I mean, all those guys that are in the big leagues and where I want to be and who I want to be, they're still superheroes to me. That was Indians prospect Nolan Jones, and we hope you enjoyed listening to Nolan and other Indians prospects, Sam Hentges, Ernie Clement, and Tristan McKenzie throughout this week's episode. For full versions of those conversations, check out the Akron Rubber Ducks podcast on the iHeartRadio app. And be sure to join us again next Sunday at 6 o'clock for another episode of At Home with the Rubber Ducks. For Jim Clark, I'm Marco Lanave. Thanks for listening. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Thanks for listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks. To listen to previous shows or for more Rubber Ducks baseball, follow the Akron Rubber Ducks podcast on the iHeartRadio app. For the latest on the team, go to AkronRubberDucks.com and follow the Akron Rubber Ducks on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, affordable family fun.